Hi, this is Susan Lazier, and I am doing this video for my textiles class at San Diego Mesa College. So today we're going to be talking about fabric, which is the right versus the wrong side. And on the right here of our screen, you're going to see a PowerPoint, and on the left, I'm actually going to be showing you some fabrics. So let's just get here and continue on. So how do you tell? How do you know which is the right side versus the wrong? Well, some fabrics are reversible. It just doesn't matter because of how it was made. This is a plain weave fabric. It's thread dyed. They dyed the yarn. Uh, so really, in the case of gingham, it's almost impossible to tell if there is a right and wrong side. So some fabrics, if there is no right or wrong side. You can use either. But with other fabrics, there's usually visual clues something you can see, or tactile clues, something you can touch. So what are, the, what are we going to say? Is it front versus back, face versus back, right versus wrong? All of these words are used, and you'll run into them in your readings and with people talking. But bottom line is, you as the designer or the person specking or using out the fabric, you're the one who gets to say which is the right or wrong side as you choose to use it. And oftentimes, designers are very creative. They will use the wrong side because they like it better. But the only word of caution I would have on this is just be careful that the wrong side is as serviceable as the right. Because usually there is a reason there's a wrong and right side. So you just want to make sure there's no floats that are going to snag or anything along that line. There is a way to technically tell. And I'm going to hold this fabric up close here so you can see. And I'm going to try to move it around in the light a little bit. There is a machine that's used near the finishing process that leaves little pinpricks in the fabric. And it's called a tintering machine. And basically, it has a bed of needles that the fabric is laid onto, just a narrow strip on one side and the same on the other. And the fabric is pulled along by these needles. And the needles serve to stretch the fabric taut so that it's being finally washed at the end and then heat pressed. You know, they're straightening the grain, hopefully. And the tintering needles help hold that fabric taut while they're doing all these processes. So the braille side, the side that has the more texture, is considered to be the right side of the fabric because the, the pricks will come up like that. So I have a picture on the right there of a tintering machine and here you can see these are the little beds of needles on either side and the fabric is pulled along by those. So we've already talked about some reversible fabrics. You know the gingham is, so let's look at a few more. Uh, this is a fabric called Osnaberg. It's another plain weave. You can see there's no difference between right and wrong side. Some canvas fabrics, this one happens to be made from hemp. If it's a plain weave, there probably is no difference between right and wrong side. Um, you know, there's lots of fabrics in that world. Here we have a twill weave, which I think could be reversible. I don't see much difference. And it just depends on the kind of twill, but you know, twill, you can see the little diagonal lines being used in the weaving structure. This one's bamboo. It's gorgeous. Okay, and we have one more here. This is, it's called Basket Weaver Monk's Cloth. It's a four by four, and you can see between both sides, there's really very little bit different. You know, hardly anything at all. In fact, I'm not sure I could tell which it is. I'd be looking for the salvage to help me along. But, you know, it's, it's brushed on both sides, so there really is not much difference. Now, if a fabric is printed, usually screen printed, and here we have a nice pique, and here you can see the wrong side. There's a very distinct difference because the color usually only is absorbed into the top part of the right side. This is a thicker fabric, so it would, you know, it's not going to go through as easily as it would a very lightweight fabric. But there's a definite right and wrong side. Here we have another, what looks to be a print, but this is a jacquard shirting fabric, but look at the wrong side. It is not, you know, this is again thread dyed and the color is woven in. Sometimes you look to see if there is a brighter color or you look to see if there's another pattern. See, there's a jacquard pattern. I don't know if that picks up here with my camera, but there is a very subtle pattern woven in white threads. And it's much more obvious on this side here. So that would make this be the right side. If fabrics are textured, and here we have a novelty pile weave. And here's the wrong side. See, there's not much going on. I mean, there's pattern, but you're not seeing this kind of texture on the wrong side. And here we have another fabric known as Madelassé. And you can see all these bubbles. You know, so this is double weave. 
but on the wrong side it's fairly flat there's still a pattern but it, the texture is why they made this fabric so you know, there's a definite right side to that if there is a distinct weave you know certain fabrics have a distinct weave you know this kind of falls into textured and distinct weaves this is a fabric that's in the Madelassé family it's a novelty jacquard but I don't know if you can see the back side just doesn't have the blisters that the front side does so I'm talking about these blisters here some designers might choose this side because they just like it better and here we have sort of a distinct weave in this fabric called novelty eyelash and so you can see they've actually snipped a float here and then brushed it to get the eyelash but that doesn't appear on the wrong side now if we have a pile surface you know here we have a this is a, a variant of velvet so this was made with a velvet and velvet has a very plush pile okay so there's a third set of yarns that makes a pile but in this case they screen printed probably an acid onto the fabric so that uh, depending on whether the pile was uh, cellulose or if it's rayon or if the pile was silk it would depend on what they put on but this fabric's made with two different fibers with the knowledge that one of them will be burned away and so that's what Zavori is they've removed part of the pile by basically burning it away so it was an acid gel in this case and then here we have a fabric that has a pile surface but this one's kind of unique this is French terry and typically the pile is on the front but French terry usually they put the pile I'll just hold it up there so you can see on the back because it's used for sweatpants and sweat tops and it just keeps you super comfortable these would snag with lots of use so it's better to have that on the inside to keep you warm and then have the nice flat surface for the right side of the fabric and then this would be considered to be the wrong side in the case of French terry other cloths not necessarily so if the fabrics brushed so here we have um, a suiting fabric and this is wool silk and cotton and I'm feeling both sides and you know this is the softest side here and this is the less soft side so in this case this one's on its carrier wrong because I think the brush side is this but again the designer has the say so if what you want is a little more of the pattern you would call this the right side if you want more of the fuzzy surface you would call this the right side so if the fabric has a woven pattern in it, so here we have something called movie magic. It's a jacquard weave, and we have two very famous people there. But if you look at the wrong side, everything is somewhat in reverse. So the pattern is going to denote the right side. And the same is true of this novelty weave. You can see you know, how the gorgeous pattern that's here, but I'm going to flip it over, and it's pretty flat and just sort of a black and dark wine color on the back, a little bit of purpley there. If the fabric is shiny, usually they, if it's going to be shiny, they want it to be shiny. Now this is this is a crepe back satin, so this is a little bit unique. Um, so the right side is the shiny side, and the back side in this case is a crepe yarn, and so it's not shiny at all. But this is actually a great satin to sew with because it's not as slippery. And actually here you can see the tentering pins. This is a good example of that tentering. This is the best example so far. So we are looking at the right side. This is definitely the braille. If it is a single knit on the front of the fabric, you're going to see little V's and this is black so you're never going to see it here. And on the back you'll see little bars but if you look at the picture on the right you'll get it. And then the other thing is when you stretch the cut edge of the fabric it it rolls uh, crosswise it rolls towards the front and if you stretch the salvage edge it rolls towards the uh, the back so you have you know different ways to tell there polar face follows that too if there are special finishes so here we have this is not really a finish this is a special weave um, it's like in this case we have embroidery and so it's actually it's not a weave at all they've taken a, a piece of organza fabric and then taken all these crazy threads and stitched them on you can see the stitching pattern holding them in place but this fabric has a definite right and wrong side because you can see the difference there if 
the you know, brighter versus dull, that often is the case. So here, you know, we have, this is a finish in this case. So, you know, we have the dull side here and we have the shiny side there. So it's pretty obvious in that. And then the last one on our list is it, sometimes you'll see manufacturer's markings on the salvage of the fabric. And this is telling us that this is a high cashmere worsted, uh, super 140s. And so the, this would always appear on the right side of the fabric. And so this is a worsted gabardine, and this is probably about $100 plus dollars a meter. You know, this is from Europe. So I mean, we have a few other ones. Denim, there's a definite right and wrong side. Damask, you know, you choose. There's a positive, negative thing with damask so that you can see. Um, I have one piece here, which is in the, the damask family. It's an upholstery chenille, but it's woven. So, you know, what's pile on one is not on the other and vice versa. So that's sort of in the damask world of, you know, textiles. So no matter what, you just need to be consistent when you're cutting out the fabric. Just always know that you're all, you know, mark your wrong side so it's real clear. And don't forget that some fabrics, if they have a nap, and like this one has a nap, it, it's softer in one direction than the other. You always have to lay those out in the same direction. So I've included some videos here that you can watch. And there's actually one on tentering there at the bottom. And the others are different people explaining how to tell right from wrong sides of fabric. So hopefully this has helped and you will always be aware and you'll make your choices creatively.